2023 was the first year that I began to take art seriously because I've literally drawn more in the past one year than in the previous five years combined. So I'm going to show you all the stuff I made during this time so you can see for yourself what one year of art progress actually looks like. Starting with the most embarrassing of them all. Oh dear god. The failure sketchbook. So in here I start off all over the place but you'll see as we go through the pages I begin to gradually form some sort of direction with my art. Which is why the stuff at the end is a lot better than what's at the start so let's have a look at page one shall we? <coughs> don't, don't, don't ask. Inmate CX079A huh? Look at that. Magnificent. Picasso come outside I just want to talk. So I actually don't dislike this page, it's a pretty decent starting point, although her eyes are so far apart for no reason. And I skipped the hands here and okay, <laughs> I still skip hands to this day so fair enough. So in these first few pages I'm drawing a lot of girls, I'm drawing a lot of hair, practicing a lot of hair because those are the main things that I wanted to get better at. And I used to have a bunch of these kind of hair studies that I do. Here's Aaron from season 4, I was mainly focused on trying to get his man bun right. Here's Belle Cornell and he's the main character from... <clears throat> Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? <laughs> oh god. Man, this face makes me want to cry every time I see it because her facial features are all in the bottom half of her face. What was I thinking? <laughs> so as you can see at this point, I'm still deep in the art trenches, but I was determined. I was like, yo, by the end of the year, I'm going to be in a completely different level. And to start that off, I thought to myself, oh, if only I knew perspective. So I began to follow this Dan Beardshop playlist on YouTube and just began practicing perspective. That was okay for a little bit. I did my apartment layout or half of my apartment layout in one point perspective. Did my room layout in one point perspective. Then I got bored because drawing a bunch of lines can only be so exciting, right? Then I thought to myself, oh man, if only I could draw hands. So I started practicing hands, and as you can see at this point, I'm still super all over the place. I'm jumping from drawing girls to perspective to hair, now to hands. Like, I had absolutely zero direction, but to my credit, I really was trying to work on my weaknesses. So the next few pages here are just hands practice. Start off with some basic hand positions, then I got a bit confident and tried to do some more uh, complex hand positions. Uh, keyword, trying. <laughs> And I was drawing a lot around this point, mainly because I wanted to start uploading videos to YouTube again. But the problem I had was the fact that I was not nearly on the level of a lot of the other art YouTubers. So the approach I had was, oh, okay, I'll just figure something out with art. I'll learn how to draw hands, I'll learn how to draw crossed arms, or just literally anything. Whatever I was picking up along the way, whenever I figured it out, I'd just make a video on it. And that was kind of my whole thing. And although I executed on my ideas horribly, I was laying the groundwork for what my channel is today, which is learning cool stuff about art and then telling it to you. And yeah, at this point in the sketchbook, we're approaching the end of February, and here I'm spending a lot more time focusing on each individual thing. Like, there's a lot of pages here where I was trying to really nail down, I was really trying to understand male anatomy as opposed to just doing three pages on perspective and then getting bored and moving on all right so that's most of the sketch that's most of the sketchbook and on a scale of one to ten i'd probably rate it a solid um okay sketchbook two i kept this from march to kind of july the reason i say kind of is because early in july i ended up completely abandoning the sketchbook like completely but regardless this is where like i really really start to figure stuff out and well, like this is where a lot of the good stuff happens and by the end of this i'm a completely different artist to what i am at the start so and like from page one you can already see a massive spike in my understanding of anatomy <laughs> Ah, so stupid. Anyway, the real first page. These are these are pretty these are pretty decent, except this because I sucked at drawing poses from the back, which is something I end up working on a few months down the line. But for now, this is what we're working with, and I'd say it's actually a lot better than the first page of my last sketchbook. I'm trying a lot more things, like I'm drawing full poses and stuff like that. And look, I didn't skip the hands this time. <laughs> These two pages are probably around two months apart from each other, and the progress is okay. At this point, I hadn't yet quite hit my first spike, but I was just still out there. I was on that daily grind trying to figure this whole thing out. And I don't know if you've seen them, but there's these kind of drawings I used to come across on Google Images, and I don't know what the style is, but I absolutely love that style, and that's exactly how I wanted to draw. So I began to reference a lot of characters in that style. And after doing this for a while, I began to improve, and I was like, yo, these are some of the best figures I've ever drawn. And I began to feel all confident. So I tried to draw some pages from imagination, just like everything that I've been referencing so far. And, uh, ha 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 ha, nope. <laughs> I remember feeling so deflated when I did this page because I thought I understood how to draw poses a lot better, but alas, 
Sometimes art gives the most brutal reality checks. <laughs> oh yes, the perspective arc. So I get back into practicing perspective again, but this time I'm a lot more determined. I was committed to learning perspective from this book I got and like every morning I would wake up and first thing I'd do is get this book out and do like maybe two or three chapters. And yo, I did not feel like it. I had zero motivation because the thing with perspective is that you can do so many cool stuff once you understand it. I mean, but at the start, it's just lines. It was so boring to me, but I was able to slog through it. It was usually the first few minutes where I'd like really not feel like it. But after that, I'd get into the groove of stuff and I'd actually start having fun learning all this stuff. Right. But it's just mostly those like first three to five ish minutes of the session. That was always the hardest to get through. Oh, and then there is this one YouTube video I watched and it was the catalyst for everything that come next. And I still remember it was this proko video on arms and legs that he did with michael matesi and i don't know what it was exactly but there's something about seeing this guy so effortlessly draw all these complex and dynamic poses that got me so like motivated to draw poses i was like yo let me do some of that too so i like hop on pinterest and i start i, I start holding my pencil like this instead of like this because <laughs> i don't know doing it like this made me feel smart or something and yo it was so fun i loved it i was blown away by some of the stuff I was drawing and then i thought to myself oh oh i'll figure it out i'll figure it out i'll figure it out okay okay so if i do hundreds of these thousands of these eventually i'm gonna understand like how the human body works like what does your body look like when you raise your arm in this angle or when you twist your torso like this as i keep doing all these like figure drawings and stuff i'll begin to like get all this information and eventually i'll be able to draw any pose from imagination right oh god that's so cool <laughs> so that was kind of my thought process at the time so 80 percent of the rest of the sketchbook is just you know all these poses me referencing poses and although it's not how I practice art right now, it was like a massive revelation to me. You have no idea how proud I was of so many of these drawings at the time. So although looking back, I noticed so many mistakes with all this stuff, at the time, I, the progress is pretty sick. Because remember, just a few weeks prior, I was doing stuff like this. So after a while of doing all this figure drawing stuff, I wanted to start this challenge where I'd draw 100 poses over like the next two or three weeks and then just see what happens. This page right here was going to be the before, like the before, like before and after. I even recorded myself drawing it and they were all from imagination, which is like, again, a little bit better than what I was doing from imagination just a few weeks before. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the idea was I do like these from imagination. And then after that, I'd go into drawing 100 poses referencing from Pinterest. And then after that, after the whole like challenge, I had to do another page where I just draw poses from imagination and I compare like my before and after just to see what would happen. And uh, like right here, I even wrote day one right here, but I, I never finished this challenge. I did about 30 or 40, if I remember correctly, although I actually did end up making that video like a, a few a, little, a few months ago, but I did the 100 poses in five days like a lunatic. And I was also still doing a lot of perspective stuff in between these figure drawings. And the thing I'd had was I'd do a few chapters of the book in the morning and then later in the day is when I do all the figure drawing stuff. As you come into June, I had this anatomy book and I'd actually started reading it now because I had all these poses I was drawing, but I wanted to have a much deeper understanding of anatomy. But I mostly use this book for just the skull, the rib cage, the spine and the pelvis, because when I plotted down the human body, these are the major structures. And I especially wanted to understand the pelvis and the rib cage, because these are the two structures that are most different between the male and the female body. So I worked on this for a bit. And the thing I had was I take what I'd learned from the book like the anatomy stuff and then later in the day i'd like apply it by referencing the poses off of pinterest using what i'd learned from the anatomy book so you know i had a bit of a thing going i had a bit of a structure going and things were slowly coming together and i was in a, and i was like in a much better place than what it was earlier in the year where i just like do three pages of perspective get bored and then do whatever <laughs> i was also doing a few hair sketches again bell cornell because i don't know i don't even know what i was doing and then right here for the longest time, this is the last page on my sketchbook. And I remember making this in early July specifically because I was in South Africa at the time. And after this, I just completely abandoned the sketchbook. And the reason I did that uh, was this guy. Now, I got my tablet, my first ever tablet in or like around April. I used to use it here and there, I used it a bit like in June. But in July, I just completely abandoned my sketchbook and went 100% 
digital. And obviously I use my sketchbook a lot more nowadays, but at this point in the year, I was fully in my digital arc. And if I had to say, about like 60 or 70% of all the progress I make throughout the year happens from this point on, because this is just where I lock in. And this is like the first tablet I ever got, because I always only drew on paper from childhood. So I was determined that the first piece of digital art that I would make was going to be special. I was going to do this original character that I'd created about four years ago. His name is Alagi, and Alagi, Alagi is the Greek word for change, and 2020 me thought that was a cool sounding name. So like, yeah, <laughs> whenever I name OCs, I just type English words into Google Translate and translate it to like Latin or Hebrew or Roman to try and come up with unique names. So yeah, it might be a bit weird to Greek people watching. It's like, hey, what's your name? My name is Change. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> So this is how it came out, not necessarily a masterpiece, like the line arts, you know, could be slightly better. But as the first thing I ever made on the digital medium, I liked it. So it took me a while to get a feel for this whole digital thing, mainly because the pen just felt a bit weird on the screen. It was like, it was not what I was used to. I was only ever used to sketchbooks and pencils and stuff. So this whole thing took a bit of getting used to. And at first I was just having fun with things, especially, especially because I never used to color, like ever. As a kid, I'd show people my art and they'd go, hey, you know, you know, this is good, but you know, you should add some color, you should get some colored pencils. And and I just go, eh, nah. <laughs> so my use of color is just super amateur here. I even have this one abomination of an art. Let me find it. This abomination of a painting. So this is the reference. And I thought I was smart. I was like, yo, I'm about to pull a light yago me. And I told myself, yo, I'll just color pick from the references and my colors will be perfect. Ha 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 ha. Uh, no, did not, it did not quite work out like I'd planned to this day. So probably the worst thing I've ever made on, on digital art. So after yet another reality check with art, I had to find a solution. And I began to do all these still life studies to try and gain a much better understanding of color. So actually at this point in the year, we're still in June. So the stuff I've shown you so far is stuff that I was making when I still had a decent balance between digital and traditional art like you know i do a bit of work on my sketchbook here a bit of stuff on my tablet there but as we go into july i kind of just sat down and really really got my routine in order and i told and i just told myself yo it's time to just go all in and i've mentioned in a video before that there was a point in the year where i just draw like crazy and it was here like for the next month month and a half i'd average around maybe four six eight hours a day like just drawing there was no school no work just draw I started off doing a lot of shading stuff because I wanted to really understand how to like how to shade the human face and all that. And <laughs> I'm still doing a lot of Belcranel hair over halfway into the year. That's that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I used to, and I tried to work on like a new piece on a regular basis, but alas, I never liked them because again, I sucked at anything past the sketching phase. So because of that, I was like, man, I just want to learn more about digital painting in general. So I ended up coming across this video by Cynics, and in here it talks about value distillations, which is an exercise where you take a reference and you paint it in just two values, background included, and like avoiding lines on all costs, just blocking shapes onto the canvas in just two values. Yo, it was so hard because it was so opposite to what I was used to, which was just lines and messy sketches and stuff like that. So I was, it was completely out of my comfort zone, but these were cool. It was a lot of fun to do a lot of these and some were horrendous, some were a little bit bearable and some I actually really liked. I was super proud of a lot of these. And you know, as we go into August towards the end of August, you know, getting back to school and stuff, I'm thinking to myself, man, man, I don't got time for all this eight hours a day drawing business. So I just began to narrow down my routine and just focused on a lot of anatomy stuff a lot of heads a lot of torsos i really focused on backs and twisting torsos and as you can see my backs here are a bit better than what they were a few months before so hey that's pretty cool but after doing this whole thing for a while working on anatomy and stuff i began to think about youtube again because i'd actually stopped posting on my channel in around april or may and i wanted to start posting again so in around october november i was doing a lot of youtube stuff but that meant that i slowed down on my art like I genuinely stopped drawing for a solid month, month and a half, and the only time I would ever draw was if it was for a video. Because I just found it really hard for some reason to balance YouTube and school and work and drawing. But I eventually, you know, got my schedule in order, I began to like work stuff out, and around like November, late November, I started drawing a lot more. And here we come back to the sketchbook, the one that I abandoned months ago. 
and it's, like, it's catching here a lot more often nowadays at least a handful of times a week and comparing some of this stuff to the stuff earlier in the sketchbook and even the stuff in my first sketchbook the progress is pretty good although earlier on i was got jumping around i had no idea what i was doing i slowly but surely began to like understand stuff and began to progressively make tweaks to the way i was approaching my art where I'm nowadays in a much more structured daily routine and like I'm improving consistently and that's fun because I look back at my drawings from one year ago and I am absolutely disgusted by them. It's cool to see like how things are going to be in another year. So make sure you stick around for part two coming January 2025. Something like that. Something light.